Hello, uh, video diary number three. Um, so today I was, uh, uh, I watched through the documentary series uh, um, High Score on, sorry I'm like all twitchy today. Uh, I watched through the documentary series High Score on Netflix. And it's kind of about the 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 history of, the, of video games, so it's 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 pretty selective in in what it covers. Um, uh, this isn't going to be about the documentary, but I, I thought the documentary wasn't terrible. It, it it didn't really go in depth, but I think some of the style of it and I think some of the messaging of it was really interesting, and really good, and I think that they covered some things about classic video games that. I um, may know about because I'm interested in such things, but somebody who who may not be as interested as myself could find these stories um, like of of, of um, especially when it talks about um, uh, marginalized groups. Like um, there's a there's a, um, a trans person who is um, talking about their experience as a video gamer as a way to before their transition to kind of um, be at peace for a little while with themselves and i found that to be very inspiring um and then some other stories that i knew about um like the video game gay blades um gay blade gay blades um that had been uh, like a a, a a gay man made it uh an, an rpg and it, it's like a really funny game because it's like uh a, i've never played it but i've seen like videos of it um and um uh, Pat Buchanan's the final bad guy, right? And, it, and it's also, you know, um, may, was made during a time when the gay community was suffering from, from the AIDS um, crisis during the um, 80s. And, and um, I can't remember approximately when it was made, but I think it was late 80s. And, um, you know, it's great to hear those voices. Um, I just learned about that game pretty recently on social media, so it's cool to see... Um, you know, those kind of stories coming forward, um, along with, uh, you know, the typical ones, interviews with Nolan Bushnell and things like that. Um, but I didn't want to talk a lot about that. Um, I think the, uh, the documentary is worth watching though. Uh, it's like a documentary series, six episodes. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about is that, um, as a poet, I find myself drawn to things that I think are like poetry, um, because poetry for me is the definitive way to to kind of express oneself in 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 language um or in art in my opinion right um i don't think that means that it's um the only way right i don't think that means it's necessarily the um the most important way on on like a public sphere but for myself personally right i think it's the 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 most important way and so um one thing that I think is close to to poetry and communicating with that in that way is surprisingly um, older video games, right? Um, newer video. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh yeah, video games were only good back in the day, and nowadays all these games are terrible and blah 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 blah. I don't I don't think that. I think the medium changes and and um, it changes for better and for worse, just like any other um, art form or any other um, form of entertainment. Um, but I think that older video games, because of their strictures, right, um, because of the limitations of technology, um, they have to find unique ways to kind of convey um, their point. Um, and so they have to use a lot of like imagery, especially like old like um, Atari games, like how do you get across this in bits? Well, you really have to focus on using specific, you know, designs to get across a specific feeling, right? Um, one thing that makes Space Invaders great is that it, you have this lim Space Invaders, Pac-Man, several of the older games that were hits, is not only are they fun to play, right, but they use the constraints as a vehicle um, for their um, uh, for their imagery, for their theming, um, in a way that Space Invaders and um, Pac-Man are constrained, right? They're constrained games. You can only go so far along the bottom line in Space Invaders, and sometimes it feels like everything is just crashing down upon you. And same with Pac-Man, you can't go outside of the, the, the maze, right? So eventually the ghost box you in. And both of those games are about 
um, the theme of them, if it could be boiled down, it are about kind of finding a way to escape within the limits that we have or finding a way to survive within these conditions um, that the outside world has put upon us, right? Pac-Man um, was born into the maze, right? Um, just like we're kind of born into this world that um, may not care or may not engage with us in a way um, or may not recognize us or, or um, may not allow us to be recognized, right? And so we have to find ways within those limitations, whether that be class, race, um, sexuality, gender, um, all those different things that, that play into who we are, right? And that are both limitations, right? But also freeing in a way, right? And um, I think that's one of the themes of those older games, right? Constantly you have these, these fighting against those constraints, right? Um, and not to say that gender or sexuality or any of those things are necessarily constraints, right? They, they, they are just um, um, uh, lines which we are drawn in, right? And which we can choose to escape or engage with or not. But ultimately, right, we, we um, still have to find ways to kind of maneuver through them, right? Everything in life that we have, um, it comes with its... its, its um, goods and its bads, right? Or it comes with things, advantages and disadvantages, right? Or it comes with constraints, um, or it comes with certain freedoms, right? Um, and so those older games engage with that in a way that I think is really unique, and in a way that a poem might engage with it, right? Um, a sonnet, right, for example. A sonnet, um, whatever the, whatever the, whatever the sonnet is about, one of the themes of a sonnet is that you're caught in this 14 line box, right? Um, and maybe you're caught in this um, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G rhyme scheme, right? Um, if it's a Shakespearean sonnet. And you're, you're caught um, trying to figure out how to, to have a volta at the, at the last two lines. And so in a way, the theme of any sonnet is how do we work within these constraints? How do we find freedom, right, in this box that we've been given, right? And and we're all kind of given, I, I don't want to like wax too philosophical about this, but we're all kind of given boxes, right? We're born in a certain time. We live in a certain place, right? And some people are more constrained than others, right? Um, and in my opinion, we should be working to, to provide the most freedom for everyone, right? Um, and that means, you know, racial and gender and sexual equality and all these things. But um, ultimately, we still find ourselves working within within our own bodies, which are their own constraints, right? Um, and 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 um, some of us are more able-bodied than others, right? And so we're more aware of of those constraints than than other people are, and um, and that could be a, a uh, a source of strength, right? Um, or a source of a way of working, you know, within that box, right? Um, the box of our own bodies, right? And so, um, you know, these older video games, which are working within these certain st strictures, right, are ultimately um, kind of similar to poems in the way that they are kind of almost artificially um, constricted through um, perhaps... Um, uh, perhaps nowadays, right, a, a, a um, game designer may decide to make a um, retro style game, right, which is putting themselves into that box, right, constraining themselves in certain ways, but that can allow them to find freedom in different things. Um, and to me, that's a, a powerful thematic message that is found in like older video games that, you know, that um, is part of the medium of older video games, right? Um, uh, and so, uh, in a way, it, it is aligned to poetry. Um, and in a way, you know, they're both poetry and um, these older video games are f about finding that freedom, right? Are about engaging with the world in a way that you want to engage with the, with the world, but also acknowledging that there are, I keep making doing this, but there are constraints, right? Um, but that sometimes uh, we can find ways outside of those constraints, um, or we can find ways to bend those constraints, or maybe even break those constraints. If you're talking about speedrunners, right? If you're talking about free verse, um, or if you're talking about 
hacking a game or modding a game, right? If you're talking about Doom or something. Um, and I think both poetry and video games provide that freedom. Um, perhaps for people who, who, who don't feel, for whatever reason, um, that freedom in their own lives. Um, uh, um, I know in my own life, right, um, uh, I, I've had periods of my life where, or, or um, things in my life that have, have constrained me, and I know that both poetry and video games have been a way for me to, to feel free um, in ways that other things are not. Um, have not allowed me to feel that. And it's weird that um, I feel free, but in the constraints that have been provided for me. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's kind of um, the, the theme for some of those older video games that um, really allies it with poetry.